So, you want to lower your bike? So today's a strange day. It's November 18th and we've been having really cold weather over here. But it seems to be going up and down and uh, my summer jacket, I pulled all the armor out so I'm going to sweat today in my sweater. But it's alright, it's for you guys. So uh, we're going to take advantage of today. Get that cold start going, we're going to need gas. Yeah, buddy. All right, guys, it feels amazing out here. So if you're watching this video right now, it's probably because you've seen my other videos on me lowering my FZ09. And quite frankly, there seems to have been a lot of comments about what exactly did I do? What parts did I go with? Because I'm sorry, I just didn't put good information, I guess, on the video description, or I didn't say it either. And I really should have. So in this video, we're gonna go over my height, the parts used, and also what we did to the front triple tree. It's gonna be a short video, but first I had to go grab gas because I plan to ride later. So we're right at a half a tank. So I'm gonna go fill up real quick. I love this bike. But I will say I have been thinking about grabbing a different bike. Um, not sure yet what bike, but uh, at first I was thinking leader bike, but I honestly don't need that much power. But it could just be a uh, Super Sport 600 of some type. Hey guys, just so you know, when you're out in traffic and you're a new rider, um, position yourself like this. See how there's still room in front of me? I, I could have gone on the left side, but really on the right side, I have room just in case somebody does hit me from the rear. I'll go flying that way, even though it's into, you know, cross traffic. At least I won't go into the back of this truck. Go to the terrace, teeter. funny is that there's a guy at the window he's an older gentleman he's looking at me like uh back in my day we used to ride harleys look at him driving that piss missile i don't know if that's what he's saying but it seems like it with his eyes at least guys get your bike so much cheaper on gas and look at that 709 all right now we're all filled up bike's happy good God, man, that char grill smells so good. And then we got this thing. I don't even know. Is that a Hyundai? I don't know what that is. We got the window tint and everything. Oh my gosh, these fall leaves, man. It's freaking pretty out here, man. Or should I say it's, it's, it's handsome out here. Look at all these handsome trees. These handsome ass trees. <laughs> that was a big dip. What was that? Oh my god. Is that a bag? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's the bag gonna do? What's the bag gonna do? No! Woo! We dodged it. We dodged the bag. <laughs> Alright guys, enough of that. You guys are here for a specific reason. That is knowing what exactly I did to the bike and mine. I guess dimensions. All right, so for your guys' reference, I am 5'7". So next step is that we're gonna need one of these. Grab yourself a measuring tape. So here's the thing. You gotta figure out the distance from your foot to your groin. So with a measuring tape, take that measurement and find that out. So my inseam measurements are 29 and a half inches. That is, again, the distance from your groin down to the ground from where your feet contact the ground. Now. Why I say this is because with a 29 and a half inch inseam, I was tippy toeing everywhere. I lowered the bike, specifically the kit says one and a half inches in the rear. So that brought the rear of the bike down one and a half inches. So as you can see, with the lowering links plus some other items, which we'll talk about in a second here, I can actually flat foot the bike. Now I'm sitting all the way 
towards the tank. This is not counting if I'm where I'm normally riding, which is kind of scooted up back over here. So now I'm more of a, got a little tippy toe action going there, but it's not as much as it used to be. Whereas before I would do this, and I would have to lean the bike to one side because I couldn't reach on both sides. So now I can actually flat foot the bike. I'm much more comfortable when it comes to stops, when it comes to maneuvering the bike at slow speeds because I mean, I know that my feet can actually reach the ground. Anyway, so now that we got the measurements down, now we're gonna talk about the parts that we used on the bike. So if we come over here to the rear of the bike, take a look in here. Yeah, see that piece right there? That is the lowering kit from T-Rex Racing. Which for reference, this is the piece that you will be taking out of your bike and replacing with their lowering kit. And I believe that they kind of shortened this piece a little bit to bring the bike down. Pretty simple installation. If you have a couple buddies, you guys can get it done in a couple hours and uh, have a lowered bike. So I will put the link down in the description below and it is the link to the combo. So not only do you get the lowering kit, you also get the adjustable kickstand. So make sure you get those two as a pack because when I ordered it, I had to get one at a time because the other was out of stock. So I lowered my bike, then I had the wrong kickstand on it for a while. But don't do that. Make sure you get both. The other thing I did was lower the triple tree. So as you can see, I have this gap up here where the triple tree used to actually sit flush with the top of this. And I actually brought it down and right here it tapers. So you can actually see where your kind of lowering limit is. And if you guys want specific measurements, I'm gonna use the old digital caliper right here. All right, so roughly, what's that say? 17.6 millimeters of a drop if you're going from flush to not flush anymore. <laughs> and about 0.7 of an inch. Now, do I recommend that you do the triple tree by yourself? No, I wouldn't do it, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Get a friend that does and uh, get that all set up. So what I did was I used a rear stand. So my rear stand over there, I put on the rear, obviously, lifted the bike up, and once it was up, I used that flat spot right there, I used a block of wood, and used my jack over there to then prop the bike up a little bit. Because what's gonna happen is if you don't do this, as soon as you come over here and loosen these two bolts, or these three bolts, this one right here, and these two down over here, this thing's gonna, this whole rod is just gonna shoot right out, and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that doesn't happen to you, and when you do start loosening these, kinda keep a hold on this, and you wanna loosen these not all the way. You wanna do it so that way it's just enough that you get some movement and then you can start twisting this and shimmy it uh, I guess in this case it was shimmying it up and you don't want to pass that taper because if you pass that taper you have nothing to grab on so don't pass the taper just bring it down and make sure that it's done evenly because just because you loosen this side doesn't mean that the other side is also going to pop up you need to also come to the other side and do the same thing over here and these need to be the same length on each side because if not you're going to have it uneven and you're going to disturb your bike i guess geometry just don't do it make sure these are even all right guys so that pretty much wraps it up on what i did on the bike so lowering links adjustable kickstand and lowering down the triple tree and i guess my dimension so i hope that helps and you guys have an awesome day. I'll catch you guys next time.